Well, this is another issue, writing skills. Australian high school students, we're told, are steeply declining in the way and the composition and grammar and, and all of those issues in relation to writing. And there's a new report out that says unless there's urgent action, this problem will become insurmountable. The analysis from the Centre of Independent Studies suggests the Australians have lost confidence in our literary education, with more than one in five Year 9 students failing to meet national standards. Dr Fiona Mueller is one of the authors. She joins me now. Dr Mueller, I made the point as we went into the break, look, I've employed young people for years in jobs in politics that, that demand really good writing skills. I can't disagree with your report. It's really hard to find young people who can write very well nowadays. So how did we get in this position? Well, many of us have been banging on about this for several decades. Um, we're, we're really looking at the consequences of 40, 50, possibly 60 years of um, decision-making based on um, experimentation and whim, rather than making sure that, that teachers are uh, capable of delivering whatever the, the particular methodology was that was proposed, and making sure that the, that the new um, methodologies were actually appropriate in the Australian context. So is this about teaching fads and the wrong fads are disrupting what I'd call the, the traditional curriculum in the humanities side of things? Or, or is this about teaching graduates themselves not having the skills to teach the, the curriculum as it should be taught? Or a bit of both? It's a bit of both. It, it is, absolutely. I mean, we're seeing generational decline because from since the 60s we've really decided um, to adopt more natural approaches um, that's how they've been sold to us and and sounded very plausible so the rise of whole language for example process writing uh critical literacy the constructivist uh, approach of of, of student-centered learning much less explicit instruction in grammar and syntax and I must actually um, refer to your show from a few days ago where you talked about, you reflected on learning about uh, subordinate clauses when you were in primary school. In primary school, yeah. And and I it, it made me think how different... But, and, and you've never forgotten it, and at the heart of understanding... Uh, a subordinate clause is really building the capacity to write complete sentences, um, independent clauses. And you don't need to know all of the, the meta language, all of the technical language, but certainly you need to understand that language is a system. It has rules. And you have to walk before you can run. So you really need to master those fundamental rules to make sure that you can start expressing yourself well. What we have now is a situation where, as you said at the start, 20% or more of our Year 9 students clearly cannot meet the national minimum standards. And those national minimum standards are notoriously low. So they're, they're seriously disadvantaged when they get into senior secondary school and then, of course, um, later in life. And many of those young people aspire to be teachers themselves. We know from studies that they report low confidence and competence in writing. So how are they going to be able to model good practice to their students? Yeah, well, imagine being in Year 9 and really struggling to read. I mean, you should be absolutely at the top of your game in terms of, uh, of comprehension and all of those basic skills so you then can be creative in your final years. Um, I'm just concerned, how do we fix this? Well, there are some speedy fixes, believe it or not, uh, and, and one of those would be, as we propose in our paper, to introduce an annual English language proficiency test for all year groups. Uh, replace the NAPLAN test of writing, which is a very narrow, uh, template-oriented assessment task that does not allow students to demonstrate their actual skills. Uh, so an annual proficiency test for, for all levels, well, perhaps starting in um, mid-primary, 
um, that that would be a speedy fix. And then, of course, it's essential that that teacher training aligns with with those expectations and making sure that those expectations are as high as they can be, as they are in the high performing systems and countries. Wow. The, we have an, a perfect opportunity this year because there are two major reviews going on. One is the review of the Australian curriculum. What's lacking in that one, which should be introduced as soon as possible, is an overarching intellectual framework that puts English language at the forefront of every subject area for every um, student at every level to make sure that, that, that that's prioritised. And the other one is a quality teacher education review, which, which the Federal Minister commissioned some time ago. Again, uh, we have to make sure that the teaching of teachers, that initial teacher education mm. programs at universities are aligned, um, consistent. We have so much national variation that it's incredibly difficult to know You're what not kidding. we're getting. I've, I've um, got to leave it. I've got to leave it there. I'm sorry, Fiona Mueller, but uh, I'll try and get to Alan Tudge, the Federal Education Minister, and follow up those two reviews. I know the curriculum review, but the teacher training one's equally as important. Thank you for your report. Thank you. I think it shakes up the conversation. Appreciate your time. Thank you.